The premium end of the mini PC market is getting spicy, with AMD's combination of efficient CPU architecture and surprisingly capable integrated graphics making them excellent options for people who don't want the hassle usually associated with the PC ecosystem, or who, like me, are just fascinated by tiny form factor desktop machines. However, they are definitely priced up there with some of the Macs they're clearly looking to compete with, so it might be worth looking for a bargain among the previous generation. B-Link have been branding their Ryzen mini PCs this way for a few generations of AMD processor by now, with the SCR7 currently at the top of the range, but presumably due to be superseded by the SCR8 once the Ryzen 8000 series APUs become more available. The SCR6 was provided by B-Link in exchange for a review, however they did not provide a script or give me any instructions, and all opinions are my own. As the name might suggest, the SCR6 is built on AMD's older 6th gen architecture, in this case featuring the Ryzen 9 6900HX CPU with integrated Radeon 680M graphics. The CPU is an intermediate step between Zen 3 and Zen 4, offering the still excellent performance seen in the 5000 series desktop chips, while scaling down the process from 7 nanometers to 6 and adding DDR5 RAM compatibility. The GPU, meanwhile, is RDNA 2 rather than the latest RDNA 3. The biggest difference between the two GPU architectures is, again, the process node. This one is built with 6 nanometer lithography as opposed to the 4 nanometer of the latest and greatest. In practice, this means the 680M clock's about 300 megahertz lower, doesn't get to enjoy the higher clocked RAM that the 7000 and 8000 series CPUs are compatible with, and also can't do hardware AV1 encoding for all you streamers and content creators out there. All in all, it's a lower performance alternative to models like the SCR7 I reviewed last year and the Geekom A7 I reviewed a few weeks ago. So, naturally, there has to be a reason for it to exist in 2024. In fact, despite the familiar sounding name, this SCR6 is a brand new release. Clearly, B-Link got hold of some 6900HX APUs and wanted to ship them in a more affordable package, so this model is slightly less premium than the older SCR6 Max, which is no longer available, and the current SCR7. The footprint is a few millimetres larger, which will be a non-issue for many people, and the materials are more plastic and less metallic. You also lose the magnetic power connector, so you'll have to make do with the boring old, easily replaceable barrel jack. For the remaining ports, on the rear there are two USB Type A's as well as a full-fledged 40 gigabit USB 4 port capable of power delivery, an HDMI 2.1 and full-size DisplayPort 1.4, meaning for up to three monitors at a time, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. On the front there's a second USB 3.2 Type A and a USB 3.2 Type C, as well as the obligatory 3.5mm combo jack. While none of these are bad by any stretch, this is essentially a downgrade. The SCR6 Max and SCR7 have two USB 4 Type-C ports, allowing for up to four simultaneous displays in total. On the positive side, one of the rear Type-A ports was upgraded from USB 2 to 3.2, whereas the 6 Max and 7 only have USB 2 on the rear and a single 3.2 on the front. Internally, things are neat and fairly simple to access. After removing the four screws holding the base plate, it's another four screws to remove a very nice metal heat spreader and fan assembly. This has two thermal pads, one over each of the M.2 slots. Adding a second drive is pretty simple, and considering the small amount of available space, it's cool that they came up with a thermal solution that doesn't involve bulky heat sinks. The DDR5 RAM sticks are socketed and come as a pair, meaning for maximum possible bandwidth, though the CPU is only compatible with speeds up to 4800 mega transfers. There's also what looks like a header for a SATA drive, though there isn't space for one, so at a guess I'd say it's probably for debugging, though I dare say some enterprising modders out there might find a use for it. So, with the cheaper materials, older APU and RAM, and one fewer USB 4 ports, 
how much do you save? Well, there are currently two options of SER6 available, both with the same CPU and RAM a 500 gig version for £579 and a 1TB for £619, or £110 less than the SER7 with the same size SSD. Both SKUs can be brought down even further thanks to the obligatory discount codes, but that means there's still a £40 premium for the bigger drive. Given the current cost of NVMe SSDs and the relative ease of upgrading the SER6, I'd say the 500 gig is the better buy. But is it a good buy? Only one way to find out. Starting with the synthetics, the 6900HX scores over 13.6K in Cinebench R23 multi-threaded, which is about 2300 points below the 7840HS in the SCR7. It's also about 1900 points higher than a 13th gen i9 in a Geekon Mini IT13 which isn't entirely the Intel chip's fault, it just isn't well suited to extended all-core tests in tiny form factor machines. The single core score puts the 6900HX at about 1600 points, or about 12% behind the 7th gen Ryzen. In Geekbench 6, the margins are similar, at least on the Ryzen front. The multi-core score of 10468 is about 14% lower than the SER7 managed, however this slightly shorter test favours the Intel chips more than Cinebench did, so the 13th Gen i9 actually scores about 11% higher this time. The single core score is about 19% lower than the newer Gen Ryzen 7 and 21% lower than the i9. In the GPU tests, the Radeon 680M shines when compared to the Iris Xe graphics in the i9. The B-Link enjoys over 30k in both the OpenCL and Vulkan tests, whereas the i9 only managed 16 and 20k respectively. As you'd expect, the 780M wins, but not by the biggest margin. OpenCL sees the new chip win by 2,000 points, or about 6 to 7%, whereas the gap widens somewhat in Vulkan. The 780M score of 36K is about 19% higher than the 680M. Moving on to 3 Mark, the Time Spy overall score is 2816, about 12% below the SCR7. Both the CPU and GPU scores are about 800 points short of the new model, but that's a bigger percentage of the GPU score than the CPU score, and that's what matters most in 3D Mark. Firestrike has a slightly smaller margin, with the SCR6 reaching just over 7k, while its successor comes close to 7700. In real-world tests, I use Blender and DaVinci Resolve. The latter does very well and can handle playing back 4K 60fps H.265 files from my Fujifilm mirrorless camera at almost full speed, especially when not using proxies. Sadly, Radeon GPUs don't handle complex layer effects and transitions, as well as a discrete GPU, so more serious editing work would be better off at lower resolutions or, say, half or quarter size proxies. The H.265 export completed in 6 minutes 5 seconds, only half a minute behind the new model, and the H.264 render fared even better. In this CPU test, the SCR6 is only 7 seconds behind the SCR7, though the Ryzen 9 7940HS in the Geekom A7 does finish the test over 40 seconds faster. The Blender Classroom test was a little disappointing, finishing in 6 minutes 53 compared to the 552 of the SCR7. As with the Resolve test, it's almost not worth mentioning the Intels, as they get well and truly annihilated in these particular tests. If anyone knows any productivity type benchmarks that Intel might fare better in, let me know in the comments. But I have a feeling that thermal throttling is the enemy of 12th and 13th gen, which would explain why 6000 and 7000 series Ryzen's keep winning these tests. On to the gaming tests and starting with Apex Legends. This is a pretty acceptable result. At full 1080p without dynamic scaling, it's possible to get in excess of 100 FPS on average, with 1% lows of 66. This does mean dropping to the low settings, with the exception of textures and anti-aliasing, but everything still looks pretty decent, and most importantly, it's still possible to spot targets at a distance, which isn't always possible once you start dropping resolution. 
using the Potato preset, Battle Bit Remastered doesn't seem to be all that impressed by how much GPU horsepower you have. The SCR6 can hit an impressive 115 FPS on average, with 1% lows of 84, bringing it roughly on par with the i9-13900H, a CPU with objectively worse integrated graphics, from a gaming perspective at least. The SCR7 reaches 130, and the A7 hits 140 FPS, so as weird as it might seem, there is still a reason to hook up one of these mini PCs to a high refresh monitor. several reasons in fact, CS2 runs superbly on the SCR6, scoring over 120 FPS on average at 1080 low with FSR disabled. This is a country mile ahead of any of the Intel mini PCs I've tested so far, which is presumably mainly because of how the new engine shifts the balance away from relying purely on CPU and instead involving the GPU a bit more. It's in the same spirit that I tested Fortnite in DX12 mode. Normally it makes more sense to test this one in performance mode, which becomes far less GPU intensive, and so shows the difference between CPUs more clearly. However, the SCR7 had enough graphical horsepower to drive DX12 competitive settings at almost 140 FPS, so it made sense to test the SCR6 in the same manner. Well, maybe it wasn't the best idea. The game runs fine, in fact it has the best 0.1% lows of any mini PC I've ever tested, but that's often as much down to the game as the hardware. Still, 75 FPS is a bit low for my liking, so I'd suggest you try performance mode instead. At 1080 low, Overwatch 2 performed very well on the SCR6, with average FPS that compared quite nicely even to the SCR7 but the real difference shows in the 1% lows. The Zen 4 system has far more consistent frame pacing, so the lowest frame rates are still close to 60 FPS, whereas the SCR6's older APU can drop as low as 40 FPS. The last of my regular tests, Civ 6's AI benchmark completed with an average turn time of 7.32 seconds, which is actually a little ahead of the SCR7. It's still pretty atrocious compared to even older desktop CPUs, and if I had a more recent strategy game to replace it with, I would. Finally, I added a couple of older titles. Obviously, everyone loves GTA V, and I dare say some people out there judge a graphics card based purely on how well it can play it. Well, at 1080p with everything set to high, 8x anisotropic filtering, FXAA and no advanced settings, it can push past 66fps on average, with 1% lows of 48. Weird choice, I know, but I was curious as to how the Radeon 680M compared to the 2013 GTX Titan, a $1,000 beast of a GPU that uses more than double the power of this whole mini PC by itself. Well, unfortunately it's not quite there, at least in Tomb Raider 2013. At 1440 Ultra, which is the max preset minus tress effects hair simulation, the SCR6 fell just short of 60fps, whereas the old Nvidia overcompensator could break past 80fps at the same settings. Power consumption on the SCR6 capped out at 92 watts during DaVinci Resolve and about 89 watts during gaming. Idle power use was around the 14 to 16 watt mark from the wall. The APU itself is limited to a 54 watt TDP from the factory, which seems like a decent balance of performance and heat, as while the chip does occasionally get up into the high 80s, that's mainly because the fan profile is quite conservative. The BIOS does allow for higher TDP limits to be set, though given the temps I was seeing at stock, I didn't risk it for this test. Also, all of my attempts at more hands-on tinkering with universal x86 tuning utility resulted in the PC shutting down completely, so I'm guessing there's a compatibility issue there. One thing I shouldn't have to mention, but 
unfortunately I do. I had to cancel a previous mini PC review from another brand due to concerns about the included Windows installation. While I have no reason to suspect any other mini PC brands of having issues with malware, I ran a deep scan in Defender to be on the safe side. While I found no such security breaches here, I did have a problem while installing some programs. The temp folder in the Windows directory didn't have sufficient permissions enabled, so I kept getting error messages when I tried to install stuff. I've mentioned the issue to B-Link, and hopefully they'll fix this shortly if they haven't already. You can simply enable the folder's permissions in Explorer if you have the same problem, but it might be worth resetting the PC as soon as you receive it, or use your own Windows installer to start from scratch. For the price, there's plenty to like here. Performance is in line with what one should expect from a modern Ryzen system, and only people attempting AAA gaming should notice a major difference between the SCR6 and models with newer APUs. Like the 7000 series chips, the 6900HX has no issues with thermal or power limit throttling, even in such a small chassis, so it's infinitely more useful for serious work than any of the 12th or 13th gen based Intel machines. How it holds up compared to the new Meteor Lake processors remains to be seen, and hopefully I'll be able to report on that in the coming months. Is the SCR6 worth the money? Well, depending on the spec, it's 110 to 150 pounds less than the SCR7, and you can't ignore the corners that were cut. The loss of a USB 4 port, the slightly larger footprint, and the slightly cheaper construction all account towards that lower cost, so it's not quite as simple as getting the previous gen processor for a discount. At the time of writing, the SCR6 has an £80 discount code, bringing the 500GB version to 499 and the 1TB to 539 so if you can live with the limitations then it's a pretty decent deal. If you can't, well, there's usually discount codes on the SCR7 too, and given how little the 8th gen Ryzen CPUs seem to offer over 7th gen, I think that model, with its Ryzen 7 7840HS, will remain a solid buy for a while to come. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.